drones or unmanned combat air vehicle are an attack and surveillance vehicles used in modern day hybrid warfare. Just a few days back, the Indian Air Force Station faced a drone attack in Jammu which injured few people and damaged some construction. The sad part was that our defense system as well as army failed to intercept those drones. By this, you can understand how dangerous is this vehicle can be. To talk on this, I have a very renowned guest on my show, Major General Dr. Rajan Kocha, sir. He has served as the MGAOC Central Command, Indian Army. I hope you will find this conversation insightful and this conversation will add up to your knowledge about drones. Major General Dr. Rajan, sir, it's an absolute honor hosting you at the Pro. Thank you for taking out the time to do this. Thank you very much, Ritwaj. It's a pleasure for me too. So, sir, how do you see the recent drone attack on Jammu Air Force Station and why is it that Indian agencies failed to strike the drones down? Ritwaj, it's rather unfortunate that this drone attack took place, but I think it was coming. If you see what was happening in the country since 2018, on the line of control, as well as on the Jammu and the Punjab borders, last year on September, there was a, a consignment of weapons almost 80 kgs, uh, which was confiscated by the Punjab police in Tarantaran district of Punjab. And it was revealed that this consignment came through the border to eight drones, which flew six to seven kilometers from the Pakistani side, came to India, but uh, somehow lost uh, communication with their uh, handlers and were destroyed or they fell on the ground. And that is how the security uh, forces were able to uh, seize the consignment. Now, what happens here is that we are aware of the modus operandi of the ISI, of the terrorists, and we are also aware of their capabilities. So we shouldn't have been surprised as a matter of fact, our anti-drone protection systems should have been in place by now. It's always a, a lead time of almost uh, three years now. Uh, you know, since we came to know that uh, they possess this kind of capability. So it is rather uh, unfortunate, I would say, because you see uh, what happens is why they are not detected. See, you will have to look at these uh, drones which are available in the market. And what was used was a quadcopter. You know, it is a safe uh, two to three kg in weight. It can go up to about 20 to 25 kilometers. It has a inbuilt GPS system and it can be controlled by a handler from close proximity, and it's almost silent. So the kind of radars which are fitted on the airfield are primarily meant for the aircrafts of, uh, uh, you know, fighter aircraft or things like that. And so that the kind of signatures which are available for detection by the radars are not there for this drone. And especially this drone flies at a very low altitude. So it's very, very difficult to do. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So sir, many experts believe that India's anti-drone capability is still in nascent stage. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree, like you said, that we, we should have uh, uh, like uh, intercepted those drones? So what are your thoughts on this? 
she uh, Ritwij, it's not that uh, we are in a nascent state, but it is that we uh, lack the urgency to uh, embrace a technology. See, uh, what happens is my experience of 37 years in the army, uh, when I joined the army, we had this uh, 7.62 uh, millimeter SLR, which is uh, right now with the parametric uh, forces. And uh, thereafter, we uh, graduated to the INSAS rifle. So in the 37 years, we were still fighting with the INSAS rifle, uh, which has a very low penetration capability. If you uh, compare an INSAS rifle with AK-47, or the clashless cob, it stands nowhere in comparison. And that is why now we are going in for a better rifle. So we don't recognize the urgency for embracement of a technology. Uh, I'll take you back to the month of February, 3rd to 5th February precise. We had the Aero India. And there was a special discussion in that on drones and counter drones opportunity in defense and homeland security. As also the DRDO chief Satish Reddy, recently he announced that India or the DRDO has developed an anti-drone protection system. He had said that it has a radar system which has 360 degrees of coverage. It has a electro optical and IR system, uh, which can detect up to uh, two kilometers. It has a RF detector, radio frequency uh, detector, which can uh, detect up to three kilometers. And all uh, micro drones, it can track and hand over for a hard and a soft kill. Uh, through uh, sensors to a system which is uh, laser based and that uh, laser based gun can uh, you eliminate the drone as also the BSF is also DG uh, BSF uh, Mr. Asthana he recently made a statement that uh, the production of drones is in the final stages for incorporation by the BSF. As regards the army is concerned, the air defense wing of the army, it's already on to it. And uh, maybe it will take another 18 months where this uh, system will be uh, finally in place. Uh, see, the idea forge a company uh, recently uh, Indian Army has uh, purchased uh, drones worth 150 uh, crores. It is a, a known as a switch drone, which has the capability of uh, uh, going up to 20, 25 kilometers, uh, around 8 kg in weight. And it can uh, be uh, carried out for your reconnaissance, uh, surveillance, and uh, communication, you measures on the line of actual control with China. So it's not that that we are in a nascent stage, but we are in a stage where we need to have an urgency, which unfortunately is lacking. Okay. Okay. Sir. So like how big of a throw, how big of a threat are drones for India's national security? Like if it lands up in wrong hands, like in this case, like there is a chance that this drone attack might be from a terrorist organization like uh, lashkar e uh, See, what is happening today is this drone is available off the shelf. You can buy it on the internet. Uh, it was reported that uh, there is a Chinese uh, company called DJI. DJI. Uh, which has a S900 model drone available in the market, which has a payload of 3 kg. Okay, sir. So now, 
just just a question so you are saying that these type of attack drones are also available in the market i mean anyone yes, they are amazon and buy all those drones they are available uh, see this uh, chinese uh, drone has a payload of uh, 3 kgs and this improvised explosive which was uh, seen in this uh, drone which was uh, used in the jammu attack was uh, carrying explosive up to 2 kgs so you see this threat is very large as also there is a firefly alta 8 drone which is in the market again which can carry a payload of 9 to 10 kg so now i can tell you this in case you have a 10 kg explosive strapped to a drone what kind of damage it can do it's unimaginable Uh, uh, there was a study uh, recently by fiki it's available on the net it has actually assessed that uh, india has a drone market of almost uh, 3 lakh crores uh, today uh, drones are uh, used in all marriage functions they are uh, used by uh, the railways they are used by the farmers for agriculture so you see this is a very large market base which is already there and uh, it is very uh, difficult to uh, give you a figure in india itself uh, there are today 6 lakhs you unregulated uh, drones which have been bought from the shadow market so you see the magnitude of the problem uh, 6 lakh drones are available in the country and many of them can be used in uh, such like attacks so the country is extremely vulnerable as on day and therefore the need and therefore the need i'll stress again to go in for a, uh, a protection system yeah okay so like how can india work towards countering such drone attacks like you talk about protection system then how can india work towards uh, developing those and where do we stand as of now in developing radar systems that can prevent such attacks very good question uh see first we must understand that what are the risks involved the risks can be categorized under uh, three categories uh, first is the privacy it can track your movement anywhere you go anyone can spy on you a general soleimani of the iranian army he was assassinated through a drone yes so it's possible to do that secondly is what we have seen in the jammu attack classified as security which can carry a payload and the third is penetration Uh, today your uh, data leakage of your uh, data is also uh, possible uh, through a drone so uh, now what are the technologies available which the country can use a drone uh, penetration uh, uh, protection the technologies which are available are radar infrared opto electronics electromagnetic and acoustics we can also use guns uh, missiles and rockets to uh, target these uh, drones and these uh, can be uh, either uh, fixed uh, mounted or man portable so uh, these are the technologies now what is being used in the world which india can actually make use of one is uh, known as the gps spoofing Uh, this is a technology which is available with the united states this technology was used by the iranians to uh, neutralize a us drone and what actually happens is this technology you can take over the control of the drone you superimpose your frequency over that frequency of that uh, drone and then you can control this drone yourself 
The second is the laser guns. The, the, the Israelis are actually uh, using it in India is also in the process of negotiation with them. It is a, a compact laser weapon system. So we can get this from Israel anytime. The third is uh, the Belarus has used, it is known as a trio. It is a, a machine gun which can uh, detect and target a small micro drone, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters also. And therefore, these uh, technologies are available. Next is that we have um, artificial intelligence knowledge with the country. We, we have quantum uh, computing available with us. We, we have blockchain available with us. We have robotics also. So all these kind of technologies we are already using in other fields. Like your medicine, you have your uh, uh, you know, scan machines, all the latest things are coming up on, on the medical field. So I'm sure this uh, technology, if used by our startups, which are already there, we will be able to develop a very potent system to counter this one. Okay. Yeah. So like, how do, do you think that India should take trainings and drone technology from Israel in order to improve our counter terrorism skills and cross border security? Because as we all know, like Israel is the leader. If we are the leader in mountain warfare, then Israel is the leader of drone warfare, as we all know. Uh, Ritwij, as you are aware, uh, we have very close relations with Israel. We already have a defense exchange program. We are uh, buying the defense equipment from them. As a matter of fact, uh, a Tevor rifle uh, X95 is being manufactured in India through technology obtained from Israel. You, it's a joint venture. In the LAC, uh, conflict, uh, we have procured the spice bombs from them. We have the MRSAM program, medium range uh, surface to air uh, uh, missile uh, joint program with Israel. We have also uh, purchased Heron UAV from Israel. And we also have a ongoing special forces training with them, as you are already saying that we need to have training. You, yes, I agree with you. But the training, as far as the military training is concerned, it's already on since 2017. You, you have the special forces. A blue flag exercise was recently uh, conducted. Uh, then we had these, you know, are actually commandos, the Garut commandos going to Israel and training with their uh, commando units, the unit. 669 and uh, for carrying out the rescue and, and the evacuation drills. So definitely we need to not only train with Israel, get the technical know-how, but also try to have a transfer of technology with them. Because ultimately the industry has to come up in India. It is part of the Atma uh, Nirbhata campaign. We need to have these industries in India because we cannot always follow the import route. And in the times to come, you will uh, see the requirement of drones as well as the protection systems are likely to increase because the number of our vulnerable areas are too many. And right now the drones or the protection systems are too less. So we need to uh, multiply this effort and uh, definitely uh, is, is going to uh, Israel is a very good idea. Okay, so, so what is the reason behind increasing drones attack around the world, not just in India, around the world? Like every country and every terrorist organization is using drones nowadays. So what is the reason behind this? See, the reason is plain and simple. 
that first of all it is a very very cheap option uh, secondly technology is not all that high which you actually require it's a low technology but thirdly is that it is uh, a system which has not been able to be uh, detected by the air defense systems of the country for example you had this uh, uh, you know oil refinery attack in 2019 in which six drones were used by the rebels and they uh, targeted the saudi arabian uh, aramco oil fields and almost 5% uh, of the oil production was affected uh, then you had this uh, first military operation where the drone was uh, used was in syria in a place known as uh, idlib where the russians are uh, manning their uh, air base on, on the 5th of march you uh, 5th of january uh, 2018 uh, this attack was uh, carried out uh, by the turkish uh, uh, turkish you know forces on to the Syri uh, you, uh, syrian territory so you have so many instances available uh, today uh, where these uh, drones are being uh, used and it is uh, and it is also an option where you can't identify the country you can't uh, say that uh, pakistan has attacked us you see uh, today a drone has been uh, used so that uh, deniability factor is there because uh, there is no marking on the drone to actually suggest that it is from the pakistan air force uh, so these countries are and secondly even if you shoot down the drone what is the cost involved a couple of thousands or at the most couple of lakh of rupees today an aircraft costs you in a number of crores for example a rafael is a is an aircraft which is almost about 7 to 8 crores to the worth of money and so if you lose a rafael it is you know quite a impact but if you lose a drone or a couple of drones it actually hardly you you know matters much and uh, you see this problem has to be tackled very on a war footing today all our doctrines and our future planning has to be based on a concept in which we are going to use this drones you see today the warfare is changing we are talking about theaterization the most impact important aspect of theaterization is that we must have the flexibility in the use of our weapon systems and today there is a requirement to uh you know mesh the use of uh, drones with our strategy our strategic uh, thinking and make it as a part of our doctrine uh, second is our intelligence systems have to be geared up you see unfortunately the raw and ib uh, are not able to uh, all the time you know give us real time intelligence because if we have this real time intelligence available it would have been much easier to uh, you preempt this attack and lastly you see there is a defense of uh, this works of defense act 1903 this act had stipulated that no a civilian construction will come up in the vicinity of defense installations up to a, a distance of 2000 meters in 
2016, this has been amended by the government and the distance has been reduced to 50 meters. So you can imagine if you, if you relate this to the scenario of the Jammu Air Base, you will find that the civil population is just within a few meters of the air base. Anybody who is inside that house, he can launch a drone into the air base without a problem and, with, and you, uh, without uh, you know, getting detected. So you see the uh, vulnerability is our own uh, creation. We, we should uh, review this Box of Defense Act straight away because if we have to uh, protect our uh, defense installations, we must ensure that the civilian infrastructure is at a reasonable distance from these defense installations. Otherwise, our vulnerability will remain. Okay, thank you, sir, for this uh, insightful conversation. And I hope my audience will get to know a lot about drones and how to co counter those in this video. Thank you, sir, for taking out the time. Okay, thank you very much for a wonderful uh, discussion. Jain. Jain, sir. Thank you.